With each passing month, our country's faced increasingly difficult times. But everywhere I go, despite the economic crisis and war and uncertainty about tomorrow, I still see optimism and hope and strength. We've seen over the last eight years how decisions by a president can have a profound effect on the course of history and on American lives. But much that's wrong in our country goes back even farther than that. We've been talking about the same problems for decades, and nothing is ever done to solve them. This election is a defining moment, a chance for our leaders to meet the demands of these challenging times and keep faith with our people. For the past 20 months, I've traveled the length of this country, and Michelle and I have met so many Americans who are looking for real and lasting change that makes a difference in their lives. Their stories are American stories, stories that reflect the state of our union. I'd like to introduce you to some of those people tonight. I'll also lay out in specific detail what I'll do as president to restore the long-term health of our economy and our middle class, and how I'll make the decisions to get us there. What struck me most about these stories you'll see tonight is not just the challenges these Americans face, but also their resolve to change this country. Rebecca Johnston is all about her family. Uh, Brian, me, Nathan, Marley, Ethan, Gabriella, Tallulah, and Jake. <laughs> the thing I love about being a mom is just that how amazing it is that everything that you do shapes who they are. Okay. That's like molding putty in your hands. And you just want to make sure you do the right thing every day. And Ten years ago, she bought a house outside the city so she could send her children to good schools. One. Now, with rising costs, it's getting tight. Her husband, Brian, works at a tire retread plant and needs to stand all day. He has a torn ACL and meniscus that he walks around with every day. He was going to have the surgery in June, but we couldn't really afford for him to get the uh, disability pay. And so they put off the operation to take care of other things. This is where our snacks would go. Um, Gabriella, and then Nathan, and then my husband and I, and my daughter, and Ethan, my son. If they know that it's this is it for them for the whole week, then they will make it last longer. I think everybody feels the same way, that they'd like to see an end in sight to all the worry and the chaos of, of everyday living, trying to make ends meet. OK, how much are we bringing in this week? How much is the car payment? Hold him, Ethan, hold him! When, roughly, can we pay this bill? All across the country, I've met families just like Rebecca's, getting their kids to school, meeting their mortgage payments, fighting for their families. It just keeps going up and up and up, and, you know, and I, can, I can remember a time when I didn't have to worry about this stuff. We measure the strength of our economy not by the number of billionaires we have or the profits of the Fortune 500, but by whether someone with a good idea can take a risk and start a new business, or whether the waitress who lives on tips can take a day off and look after a sick kid without losing her job. An economy that honors the dignity of work. Earlier this year, we already knew our country was in trouble. Home foreclosures, lost jobs, high gas prices. We were running a record deficit, and our national debt had never been higher. But then, a little over a month ago, the bottom fell out. What happened in the financial markets was the final verdict on eight years of failed policies. And we're now going through the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. A few weeks ago, we passed a financial rescue plan. It's a step in the right direction. And as president, I'll ensure that you, the taxpayers, are paid back first. But we also need a rescue plan for the middle class, starting with what we can do right now that will have an immediate effect. As president, here's what I'll do. Cut taxes for every working family making less than $200,000 a year. Give businesses a tax credit for every new employee that they hire right here in the U.S. over the next two years. And eliminate tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. Help homeowners who are making a good faith effort to pay their mortgages 
by freezing foreclosures for 90 days. And just like after 9-11, we'll provide low-cost loans to help small businesses pay their workers and keep their doors open. None of that grows government. It grows the economy and keeps people on the job. This is what we can do right now to restore fairness to the American economy and fulfill our commitments to the American people. The company I worked for went broke. Before they went down, they used $19 million for the retirement. And when they closed up, I should have gotten about $1,500 a month from retirement. Right. I only ended up with $379 a month. You earned your pension. You earned it. It wasn't a gift. You gave up wages so that money could be set aside for your retirement. Time and time again, what we're seeing is companies who owe their workers retirement, pensions, shedding those obligations. When you make a commitment to workers at a company, uh, those aren't idle promises. Those are promises that should have the force of law. Thank you. Americans, they don't expect government to solve all their problems. They, they're not looking for a handout. If they're able and willing to work, they should be able to find a job that pays a living wage. They should be able to retire with some dignity and some respect. Think of this. Barack Obama is going to be a Democrat in the presidency who actually cuts taxes. But he's going to cut taxes for the people who really need a tax cut. He's going to cut taxes for the struggling families. And he's going to do that while holding accountable those companies that take advantage of tax breaks in order to send jobs offshore and to other countries. I don't know if it's that common sense Midwestern way of getting things done, but Barack Obama has Kansas roots. and. He really has a plan to put us back on track and help us move forward. The challenges be before us now are big. What we need are big solutions and big thinking. And Barack Obama is a problem solver who thinks big. It's a once in a generation kind of leadership and that's what Barack is offering us.